going on everybody? It's uh, Trev back again. And this time I'm going to be bringing you a video on an interesting topic. It's going to be um, the hypothetical matchup between George St. Pierre and uh, Anderson Silva. And uh, we just saw UFC 117 last weekend uh, with um, Anderson Silva against uh, Chael Sonnen. And um, after watching that matchup, that has changed the way a lot of people view Anderson Silva, see you know what kind of a fighter he is, his style, and also changes their perspective on what it would be like if GSP was to fight Anderson Silva in a dream matchup. Um, realistically, uh, my opinion on this uh, basically goes like this. If they did fight, and I hope they will, I think that if they do fight, we'll probably be looking at, if it's going to happen, it'll probably be next summer. But there's a bunch of things that have to happen in order for them for this matchup to come together and it to happen. George St. Pierre has to beat Josh Koscheck. Then after that, George St. Pierre is probably going to have uh, and that will be, I believe, before Christmas, sometime in November, October, December, somewhere around there, that matchup's going to happen because they just finished filming The Ultimate Fighter. So um, after George St. Pierre uh, beats Josh Kostak, if he does, he should, um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, after that, he'll probably have, realistically, one more fight, um, probably, you know, maybe around March-ish against, uh, there's a lot of guys in the uh, welterweight division right now that he could fight. Uh, it could be Jake Shields, it could be uh, Marvin Campman. I mean, there's there's quite a few good fighters in that uh, uh, weight class too. So we'll have to see how that turns out. So I think it'd be, it'd be Josh Kostak, one more fight after that with either Jake Shields, Marvin Campman, or somebody else in the welterweight division. Then Anderson Silva's gonna come back at around that time because it looks like he has uh, been injured. Um, they said he has a cracked rib, so he has some kind of uh, probably uh, hairline fracture or fracture somewhere in his ribs, his rib cage from uh, from apparently training right before the uh, right before the fight, and uh, with Chael Sonnen, and so he won't be back until relatively that time. This would be 2011, uh, March 2011. He's going to have uh, one fight there that will be probably against uh, Vitor Belfort, but it could be against uh, Chael Sonnen. Uh, we'll have to see. I'd really like for them, what, what I'd like for them to do is right before Christmas, I'd like to see a, uh, if, if um, Anderson's injured, which he, he will still be off from that injury, um, Chelsea Sonnen against Vitor Belfort to determine who would fight uh, Anderson Silva again. So anyway, um, whoever wins that or if uh, you know they choose to give it to Vitor this time and, and Chelsea Sonnen does not get an immediate rematch, Vitor would fight Anderson. Anderson would have to beat Vitor or Chael, possibly, but it looks like it's going to be Vitor. And then after that, um, if both um, Anderson Silva and GSP continue their recent undefeated streak in the summertime, we could be hypothetically looking at a, a matchup between the two. And it looks like it'd probably be at 185 because George St. Pierre, is uh, he's been training with uh, some uh, Olympic uh, lifters, learning how to do some you know, power lifting, putting on lots of muscle, eating a specific diet to try to get to that pinnacle of, uh, of uh, weight so that he can cut down and basically he'll just be under 170 with uh, you know uh, all the water and everything else uh, gone from the weight cut. So um, if, uh, if, if all that uh, comes about and goes through we could be looking at a George St. Pierre versus Anderson Silva summer 2011. That would be that would be very cool to see and um, realistically I think that uh, the matchup would go something like this. George St. Pierre has fought now since he lost that Matt Serra fight as a pure wrestler, basically. He's fought, he has his karate background, and he uses the strikes from karate, but more than that, more so, he's using his wrestling um, to dominate opponents, to take opponents down and keep them down, and uh, also with his jiu-jitsu, because those two come in together. Uh, wrestling, obviously, has more to do with putting the person on his back once they're on their back, um, keeping them there, and making sure they stay down, and that kind of stuff. Um, you get into jiu-jitsu, defense, and uh, you know, attempting submissions, things like that. So, if Anderson Silva fights George St. Pierre, I think that we would see something very similar to what happened with the Chael Sonnen fight. Now, Chael Sonnen is probably a better wrestler at this point than George St. Pierre, but uh, for MMA, that's kind of hard to say, because if you saw Josh Kostak versus uh, George St. Pierre before, George St. Pierre took him down, you know, out-wrestled him, uh, out-wrestled uh, John Fitch when they fought him. I mean, he's just George St. Pierre's out-wrestling everybody. So I think that, that uh, Anderson Silva would not be able to stop George St. Pierre's takedown. He wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't, basically, I don't think Anderson Silva really, realistically, would want anything to do with George St. Pierre because George St. Pierre would be able to take him down and keep him down, just like Chael Sonnen did. 
However, George St. Pierre won't get submitted and would have better cardio than Shell Sonnen does. He's a little bit lighter. He would be able to go longer. So this would be a very bad matchup for Anderson Silva because, number one, he could not submit George St. Pierre, or most likely he won't be able to. He won't be able to stop his takedowns. Okay, The only chance Anderson Silva has would be on the feet. And George St. Pierre is no slouch on the feet either. He's got you know lots of years of experience, and uh, realistically, uh, Anderson Silva's Muay Thai is going to become basically, uh, as far as uh, the feet go, is going to be useless because if he tries to kick George St. Pierre, he's going to get taken down. If he tries to Muay Thai plumb him and knee him, he's going to get taken down. So you know, pretty much, uh, no matter which way you look at it, the only the only chance Anderson Silva would have is a puncher's chance. And what we've seen, you know, recently, and what you should know if you're an MMA fan and been one for years, puncher's chance isn't very much. So I would say that the odds are probably if they fight, um, it, we'd be looking at something like 70 or 80 percent chance George St. Pierre would be able to defeat Anderson Silva. Now that being said, I don't think this matchup will come about because after this matchup we saw with uh, with Jill Sonnen against Anderson Silva, we got to see that uh, Anderson Silva is really not as good as they make him out to be. Okay, when Anderson Silva first entered the UFC, he was basically entering a division, the 185 division, that didn't really have that many good fighters in it. You know, most of the fighters are either going to be a welterweight or they're going to be a light heavyweight. The 185 division, Rich Franklin was pretty much the ruler of that for a long time. And we're getting to see now that Rich Franklin is not that great either. In him moving up to 205 and doing, doing that kind of stuff, he really hasn't had much success there. He's okay, but he's not a fantastic fighter. Look at what Vitor Belfort did to him. Okay, uh, he made him look like a little girl. He hit him once, and that was it. That was the end of the fight. So uh, Vitor Belfort is going to be a huge test for Anderson Silva. And a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Vitor, uh, you know, uh, you know, he's had problems, and you might have problems with the weight cut and this kind of stuff. Vitor Belfort has been fighting at this weight at 185 now for about three years. When it, in the days of affliction, he fought at pretty much all the affliction events. I think, I think all of them, and uh, he won all his fights there at at, uh, at uh, middleweight. And, uh, you know, he's been, he's been doing really well. And this is a good weight for Vitor. Back in the day when Vitor was fighting, he was at this weight. He's fast, he's powerful, he's got a good mix of everything. Whereas the Vitor Belfort light heavyweight or heavyweight um, fighting those bigger guys, he puts on more muscle and it screws up his timing and it screws up his uh, movement. Okay, and he's got, the, he's got the muscle, but, you know, when he's throwing punches and everything, it, it really screws up his uh, timing. At, at this weight, at, uh, at middleweight, 185, he is going to be able to, to knock Anderson Silva's head off, probably. More, more, more likely than not, Anderson Silva is going to be going to sleep if he fights Vitor Belfort. I'm saying that right now, you know, his wrestling, Anderson Silva's wrestling is not as good as Vitor's is. Vitor is faster than Anderson Silva. He's more powerful of a puncher. If you, if you don't believe me, go back and watch Vitor's fights, okay? Anderson Silva's best chance to beat Vitor is grappling. And Vitor is also a great grappler as well. So, you know, realistically, Anderson Silva's days are numbered, I say. Um, he's going to take some, some time off, and he better improve during that time. Because if he comes back how he's been fighting lately against Vitor, a rematch with Chael Sonnen, or George St. Pierre, he's going to lose. No matter which way you look at it, Anderson Silva's days are numbered. He's going to be losing within the next year to two years, I say. Those are my thoughts. If you don't agree with me, Give me a thumbs down if you agree with me and you think Anderson Silva's days are numbered. Give me a thumbs up. You guys have a good one. I'll see you.